In today's video, I built a DIY clutch pedal for my Camus C5 steering wheel kit. Along the way, we answered a tough question. Does having a clutch make you a better drifter? Now, it may seem obvious. Yes, it does. But is that really what you need? First thing you want to do is open up a notebook and kind of jot down what you want to do. What design do you want to stick with? How are you going to use these parts? And how, how is it going to look? Is it going to look like or is it going to look pretty decent? After you stared into your notebook and thought about what your life choices were, you go outside to where it's gross and hot and sweaty and humid. All right, don't mind the uh, super clean mess over there. Um, I have these angle irons from back in my garage door days. Uh, I have a lot of this stuff. I actually gave most of it to my dad. Um, it used to just lay right here. So I think this is a good base for us to start. Unfortunately, this is only like a, you know, a quarter of the way there. So I'll have to double it up, I'll, you know, technically I'll have to double it up so I can use it uh, the way the way I need to. So let's uh, let's get cutting. Let's see what we can do and go from there. What I've accumulated as well from garage doors is this big old thing of nuts and bolts. I have a few different flavors that I think will work really well. After going through all the different flavors of nuts and bolts I have, I realized that when you're making this yourself, make sure you use two different size thickness bolts as you want one that are thicker, the full size of the hole, and one that is smaller so you can create a proper C channel that they both slide into. You don't want them to be identical or they won't close in on each other. Luckily for me, the CP5 pedals actually have four mounting holes that I guess are used for cockpits or something, but I was able to kind of hijack the one near the brake pedal to mount the new clutch on. As far as the spring goes to make the pedal go back and forth, I use the rear shock of a Traxxas Stampede I haven't used this car in maybe two years or so. I absolutely love this thing. And it actually has an unlimited edition monster energy body on it, but I just never have money to fix it. And uh, so I'm, I'm using the parts for something else. Luckily for me, the one that I chose actually had a bench shaft. So I'd have to replace this one anyways in the future. So I guess it all works out. All right, so it's been almost an hour since the last clip. I think I've done pretty good progress. Let me, guys, let me show you guys what's going on here. So I used one of the factory mounts uh, from Camus. I just made it a little bit bigger and I was able to put my nut in there. That sounded weird. Um, in the future, I'll probably do just one on this side, even though it won't go anywhere, just so it's even. As you can see now, there's a little bit of a, a wobble. I play on carpet, so it's going to be just fine. I don't think that'll be a problem. Uh, on the front, you can see it's hard to tell how much actual weight there is. The brake pedal is definitely the stiffest still. And then compared to this, this is just like nothing. Which essentially, it's not really what you want, but it's better than nothing. All right, cool. Looking back here, um, you can see where the shock is. It's uh, held in pretty nicely. I think my idea of putting it in the hole was probably decent, but it didn't execute very well. So I like that. That seems to be holding up pretty well. Like I said before, I don't remember if I mentioned it, but we can always cut this to length. So it's really just really minimalistic. But if I'm going to put a controller in here and eventually have like a potentiometer set up, it may, uh, you know, it, it may be useful having this space back here. Also too here, this one is actually holding these two bars outwards. And then since this one is pinching it, this one is kind of counteracting that. So that's what I've been, uh, that's what I did that for, just to kind of help it so I can get it tight to where the actual lock nut won't come out, but it's still having a, a little bit of play. On the sides right here, I put a little bit of just grease, like all purpose grease, just to kind of help with the friction. So I am actually very happy of that. That is, uh, that is, is gonna work, I guess, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Um, so I guess the next part is trying to figure out electronics. So, yeah. All right, guys. So for electronics it was actually pretty challenging for me. I had originally planned on kind of cutting up a keyboard, you know, getting a button and just doing a momentary kind of on and off switch. And I ended up that's what I was doing. But um, I came into a little bit of money, had like 10 bucks in Amazon gift cards. So I bought one of those little mini Arduino controller modules. And that actually ended up being a pain in the ass. It was it was absolutely awful, worst experience ever. I think it was just the seller was selling just these crap little Arduino, you know, things. And they wouldn't program. They wouldn't connect to the computer. 
I made a form on the Arduino page and the people there tried to help me out as much as they could and it's still nothing like the thing would not work I don't know why it was just <laughs> it was just a dud it was dead and then I uh, returned that one and, and ordered a new one um, like a replacement and that one was even worse that one wouldn't even connect to the computer so I, I immediately gave up on that um, it took a day and a half just of diagnosing and trying to figure it out just nothing absolutely nothing so I went back to the original idea of kind of uh, cutting up a keyboard and um, kind of hacking it and adding the cables to the pins so the pins were actually pretty tricky and I didn't know this and I had to do some like kind of investigative work uh, there's two sides of the pins and you have to have a lead kind of like this one that's you know the same wire um, and how it works is like if you start on one and you go all the way down the line those are keys you go to two you go all the way down the line those are keys so on and so forth so that's how the keyboard has so many damn keys because it, it every single phase I guess you would call it you'd have to use the other side of the cable to kind of find what you were looking for there's a website that I use uh, like keyboard finder or something like that um, or a keyboard tester and uh, as soon as I hit shift because that's what I programmed it to it, it told me that I was holding down shift and uh, I'll, I, as the b-roll that you're seeing right now those were the combinations for this little cheap like uh, this is just a Logitech wireless keyboard that I had um, and I was able to hack that up and, and kind of use that for my advantage so that is the one plus side of this. There's no extra cable coming out of the shifter. It's all wireless. So I think that's actually pretty neat. I was able to save the little battery compartment and also keep the keyboard functionality all intact. So I have a little dongle connected to my computer. And then this is technically holding shift down every time I hit the pedal, which is working great. Um, the, the way I did the button system, I kind of, um, the button that I found was from an old kind of boombox thing that I had and I, I cut up the motherboard and stacked it over each other with tape so when the spring goes near it it kind of clamps it down um, not a hundred percent permanent solution I feel like over time I will I will tend to get a lot of uh, ghosting like or, or, or misclicks you know like if I push down it's not gonna actually actuate so I definitely have to come up with a better solution and if you guys have an idea please let me know I'm thinking of doing like a long uh, screw that goes down and touches the button that I have just mounted to the, to the bottom of it I think that's probably the best way to do it um, I would have ideally wanted to do a potentiometer that's what I was trying to use the microcontroller for but since the microcontroller was a dud I'm not spending more than 10 bucks on a controller I'm just cheap like that uh, that's that's kind of the, deviates away from you know this whole kind of little project is just do it cheaply and do it uh, kind of hack hack assily <laughs> if that's a word so I definitely don't um, think I will be upgrading in the future unless something really comes up and I can do it the beauty about this setup is I can essentially ultimately make it to where I have infinite combinations I can in theory create infinite controllers because now I have a keyboard a second keyboard and I can I can attach uh, like a shifter I can do a shifter um, or I can do a uh, handbrake right that would be pretty cool I think that's something I'm gonna do next the beauty about this is I've kind of have learned um, to just use the clutch as a handbrake so I technically don't need a handbrake I can just map the clutch to the handbrake and then in BMG I can just use that so it's been pretty sweet but definitely v2 is gonna come out soon and I'm gonna try to do something different about that button you guys do have any suggestions on what I should do what I should try uh, definitely let me know I think uh, I think I had a lot of fun um, figuring this out and trying to code with the Arduino a uh, huge shout out to not that guy for <laughs> um, being the first one to help me with that stupid Arduino board he gave me the initial code to kind of do a little blinker test um, which is super easy code especially for like someone starting out I think it's even in the base Arduino app but he gave it to me he gave me some suggestions so huge shout out to you thank you Tristan I appreciate your help um, other than that I think that's it man uh, something that I do want to do is definitely space out the clutch I think it's way too close to the brake pedal and I have problems like hitting them both at the same time so 
moving it out just a little bit would be absolutely perfect all of the stuff that i found can be bought at the home depot near you lowe's uh this obviously the screws and bolts you can get anywhere um you just have to kind of get creative with what you can get i will try to link everything i've used down below but you know obviously these are the things that i just found around the house and you don't necessarily need to use them and you don't even need a wireless keyboard i think that was just like a luxury for me that i had a, a keyboard that was already broken it was uh if you use this keyboard for maybe 30 minutes or so, the keys don't register anymore. So it was a keyboard I've been using for a long time. It's like a keyboard and mouse combo and it just stopped working. So it was kind of uh, just sitting in the garage and then I was like, well, it, it, I'm sure it'll work for just a, a quick momentary button. So we'll see how it works. <laughs> Definitely stay tuned to the channel. Subscribe if this is the first video you're watching from me. Uh, I will be using this thing every single time I record. Every single time I film BeamNG videos, for the most part, I've been using the Canvas C5 steering wheel. If you are interested in checking out the Canvas C5, uh, I do have a link down below that I can get you to the storefront and get you to get your own budget direct drive wheel. Uh, the Canvas C5 is absolutely amazing. They did sponsor the channel a few months ago by sending this out to me, which I'm super thankful for. So huge shout out to Canvas. Thank you guys. Uh, if you guys do want uh, you know, anything from the store, or from the website you can use promo code Ector plays for five percent off but other than that i'm gonna let you guys go man i've had so much fun with this and uh i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna leave you guys with some i think i'm gonna add some drift clips in the beginning of me trying to like figure everything out but i think it's it's a world of difference bro like driving without a clutch in a game especially like bmg drive where it's very very particular about how you drive the vehicle um it's a really a night and day difference uh, a lot of people say you don't need a clutch and I was one of those people like oh clutches don't matter I'm drifting <laughs> yeah I was wrong dude I was so wrong as soon as I put that clutch in and I got it mapped and I, I pulled out the first car like turning and then you hit the clutch and the back end just goes the way you want to and you're like bro like months of trying like I have I have probably 40 no that's probably exactly I have probably like 15 hours of footage of just me trying to learn how to drift in beam and g drive because i've been trying to make a learn how to drift video or like my milestone of drifting video ever since i got the wheel because it is night and day from using a remote to a wheel and uh i have hours of footage of me just like smashing into a tree smashing into the guardrail like i just can't it's uncontrollable it's unplayable um so absolutely amazing well other than that i'm gonna stop talking thank you guys so much for watching and